Team, keep it clean. Freelancer in a building. What's going on, baby? Now, um, when y'all saw the notification that the Ravens were hosting Nelson Aguilar on a visit, and if this is your first time hearing about it, well, there you go. But I, I know for a lot of us, we all were thinking the exact same thing, and that was drops. Drops. Nelson Aguilar has a problem uh, with drops throughout his career. And that's the first thing that came to my mind. So, but then I thought, like, wait a minute. I remember seeing like clips of him having a lot of drops with the Eagles. I remember seeing clips of him having a lot of drops with the Raiders, but he was on the Patriots the past two years. How, how were the drops then? Because I, I don't remember his name being called and that being brought up very often. So, hopefully. Because I'm trying to put a positive spin on this for everybody. But hopefully, by the end of this video, the way that you view Nelson Aguilar as a potential Ravens wide receiver, hopefully your thoughts on it will change. But I'm just going to go by the numbers. So, um, if we take a step back. Now, first off, what would his role be if the Ravens were to bring in Nelson Aguilar? Well, I think he would be a deep threat. Uh, he would be a speedster wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. And he's he's a shifty guy, too. Because we, we know Devin DuVernay got some speed, but Devin DuVernay, he's not really shifty like that. Nelson Aguilar, he is. He is a lot more shifty than a Devin DuVernay. Um, obviously, Rashad Bateman, he got some speed, too. But Rashad Bateman, um, he's like he's I guess he's just like a do-it-all type of guy. Uh, we could still use another one of those, too. Now, if, and if the Ravens did sign Nelson Aguilar... I, I, I would not think, I would not hope, but I would not think that it would be, all right, Nelson Aguilar, that's our guy. That's the one right there. Oh, yeah, we straight, we set, that's it. No, I would expect Nelson Aguilar to be a, a complimentary wide receiver to whoever else holds down the top spots, one of those top spots being Rashad Bateman and another one of those top spots being somebody else. So I think um, if we think about the potential of a Nelson Aguilar joining the Baltimore Ravens, we got to think realistically, and I, I do not realistically think that he would be the number one guy. Now, um, getting into the good stuff, uh, if we go back, let's go back to 2016. 2016, because because let's see what all what all of us were thinking. Again, when we first found out that they were hosting him, we were talking about the drops. So in 2016, he had five drops. Good amount of drops. In 2017, he had seven drops. That's a lot of drops. In 2018, he had three drops. Okay. Improvement, 2019, he had four drops. So it started going back up again. And then in 2020, he had six drops. So he had a lot of drops from 2016 to 2020. Uh, but then in 2021, which was his first year with the Patriots, he had one drop. And then last year, which was his second year with the Patriots, he only had two. So the last two years, he's had two drops and he's had one drop. So he's had a total of three drops the past two years. So something changed, something happened to where his drops were drastically reduced and his hands must have drastically improved. But then at the same time, like, wait a minute, we, let's see what the numbers say. So uh, in 2022, he had 31 catches for 362 yards, two touchdowns. In 2021, he had 37 catches for 473 yards and three touchdowns. But then previously in 2020, uh, let's look through 2016 through 2020, um, because 2020, the year before, um, he had 48 catches for 896 yards, and his drops were higher, as we know, but he had more opportunity. But he did make some play. He had eight touchdowns, had almost 900 yards, eight touchdowns. So he was productive, but he had some drops. Uh, and then 2019, he had 39 catches for 363 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, and in 2019, I forgot how many drops he had. He had... Four drops, so that was a year it was a little, a little shaky there. Uh, but anyway, uh, 2018, he had 64 catches for 736 yards, four touchdowns. 2017, he had 62 catches for 768 yards, eight touchdowns. So you, you see, I, I, I guess the correlation is right there. The more opportunities he gets, the more yards he gets, because as a backup receiver, he's getting some, a nice amount of yards, and he's getting touchdowns as well. So he's scoring. He's obviously a playmaker, but the drops just, they come with the territory. So increased uh, increased volume, increased drops. And 
that's kind of expected. I don't think that should be a surprise or anything like that. That if somebody's getting more opportunities, more balls are getting thrown their way, then their drop percentage is going to go up. It happens. So as far as his drops, I, I'm not really tripping over that much. Bateman had his drops. Hollywood had his drops. And I know we, we want shorthanded receivers for sure. Um, but for me, the way I look at it, if you're out there making plays, yeah, you're going to have a drop every once in a while. Every player is not going to do everything to perfection all the time. A receiver, they're going to have their drops. A running back is going to have a time where he hit the wrong hole or they fumble. A quarterback is going to have a time where they throw a bad pass or they throw an interception. It, like st- An offensive lineman is going to have a time where he whiffs on a block or just maybe gets ran over or something like that. We could go down every the, the list for every position. But the, the more time you're out there on the field – the more opportunity you're going to have to make some great plays, but also the more opportunity you're going to have to make some bad plays. Now, had his drops been super high and his production was super low, then I'd be looking looking at it a lot different. But with increased production, increased volume like we talked about, yeah, the the drops may go up, and, and they have gone up. It happens, but so is the production. So I'm not, if the Ravens were to make this move, for Nelson Aguilar, and it would be a very Raven-esque move. I'd be, I'd be like, okay, that's cool. It's, it can't be enough. It can't be it. It can't be it. It cannot be it. But okay, cool. <laughs> Show me what's next in addition to Nelson Aguilar, because uh, something that we could definitely use for the Baltimore Ravens is more playmakers at the position of wide receiver, and that's Nelson Aguilar. With opportunities, he can make plays. Straight up. With more, with more opportunities, he can make plays. Um, but again, this it, it, it cannot be it. It cannot be the one and only. The, the, that cannot be their big move at the wide receiver position. Um, so, yeah. Obviously, there's still trade options. Obviously, there's still other free agent signing options. Um, obviously, there's still the draft as well. So you got options. You definitely have options. But Nelson Aguilar um, is not the worst option that the Ravens could have. And again, he cannot be the only option, though. So we'll see what happens. Um, it is, again, just a visit, too. It could mean a lot of different things. Uh, it could mean that the Ravens are significantly interested in Nelson Aguilar. It could mean that there's somebody on the Ravens staff that wants to put Nelson Aguilar's name out there in the public again just to give everybody a reminder in the league that, hey, he's available. Um, it could be a smokescreen for something else. It could be the Ravens. They may be talking to another receiver. And, again, like we said before, they 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 do that. It happens around the league, not just with the Ravens, where they may be interested in somebody else, but they may use a different player to sort of gauge how interested the real player that they're interested in is in them. And they may be trying to bring that other player's price down. They may be trying to show that other player like, hey, we want you to come on board. We want you to be a member of this team. But, hey, if, if you don't want to come through, we'll go in a different direction. We're not afraid of going a different direction. And the Ravens could be publicly putting it out there. Hey, we have an Nelson Aguilar on a visit just to let that other player know, like, hey, we ready to move on with or without you. I know most Ravens fans hoping that that's what it is, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. So, again, I ain't, I ain't tripping over that. I, I, it was funny. I did see a lot of different reactions, especially on Twitter when this news came out. One of my guys said, man, sell the whole team. Sell the Baltimore Ravens. I was like, whoa. Woo. Okay, now. That's a, but I um, it's not a surprising Visit. I can't even say move from the Ravens. I mean, I guess it's technically a move. It's a transaction. It has to be submitted to the, the, the NFL transaction wire, whatever. But um, it is very Raven esque of them. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We, we ain't tripping right now. But the the reactions that people did have to it uh, are very funny. So please, please do check Twitter uh, if you must. You you must. You should. I, I highly recommend it because because y'all are funny. Y'all are really funny. Uh, when when this news first came out, I, I quote tweeted and I said, hashtag, I said, Baltimore getting busy. Baltimore getting busy. And somebody replied to that and they said, I, I liked it better when they weren't getting busy. 
And yeah, so y'all y'all are real creative with it. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And we'll see if Nelson Aguilar is going to end up coming to the Ravens. If not, we out.